In today's video, I want to clarify a couple of things regarding the fork function. I have been asked this question quite a few times and I decided to actually answer it with a video for it. So, uh, in one of the videos, we looked at uh, the fork function and the functions get peed and get parent peed. So, this, uh, this little program, what it was doing is, was calling fork um, and for the child process, it was sleeping for one second, and for the parent process, it was immediately printing to the screen the results of get peed and get parent peed, and uh, then waiting for the child process. Um, and if we run this, all right, we're gonna get, of course, two lines here simply because both the child process and the parent process actually execute this line of code, so they both get printed on the screen. The their current process ID and their parents process ID, of course. And here in the end, one of them prints no children to wait for because one of the process is the child process and the other one is uh, the parent process which has to wait for that uh, child process, right? So th this makes sense. Um, now, the clarification that I want to make here is regarding really this part of the code. A lot of people have uh, asked me why, why in this case the child process had the ID of zero and then after it printed uh, this line, it printed a number different than zero. Why was it 11,000 and whatnot? Because before it was zero, of course. So what's up with that? What's the reasoning behind it? The misunderstanding really begins with uh, the way I named the variable in which the return value of fork uh, is stored. Uh, I called it id and I named it so because I said okay it's the process id. Um, but this is a bit wrong because you would think that oh this is the current process id so that means that we're checking if the id is zero and of course for all child processes, the ID is zero. So that's what you started to have in mind. But this is actually wrong because here fork does not return the current process ID, okay? It returns something different and it does return uh, two values, okay? Because simply because fork, you know, splits the execution of a process, it has to return two different values and we're going to discuss what exactly fork returns in this case. So what does fork actually return? So here, first things first, we have the parent process, right? This is our first line of execution and inside, so inside uh, the parent process, we are returning the child process ID, right? So the, the child process ID, so the child process that has been created after uh, fork, after the fork function has been called, um, we are returning it inside this ID variable. Great, so we have a process ID, but remember, this is inside the parent process. So we are inside the parent process and inside the ID variable, right, we have the child's process ID. It's not our own. We have our own parent process ID, right? So if you call uh, if you take a look at, I, uh, at the value of id and you call get pid on, uh, on the parent process, it's going to be different. So it's going to be different than get pid. Okay, great. Now what happens inside the child uh, process line of execution? So this is inside child process. Well, here actually we have an arbitrary number and that is zero. That is exactly what we're getting inside this ID variable when we, uh, when we arrive at this line of code here inside the child process, okay? So because of that, we know that this is the child process. That's how we can distinguish between the parent process and the child process by simply checking if whatever fork returned was zero. But this zero again is not the process ID that has been uh, assigned to that process. It's simply an arbitrary number, just zero, that is there so that we can actually check whether or not uh, 
we are inside the child process or we are inside the parent process at the time of execution because well think about it if this was not zero or was some arbitrary number randomly assigned how are we going to check if we are in the parent process or in the child process so that's what that zero is about and i'm going to note this again and say here that yes it is going to be different than the get pid return value that we're going to get if we call get pid on this right so of course it's going to be different and i i am going to showcase uh the value of id here so returned let's say something like returned by fourth was this and then let's actually yeah we're gonna still keep them on the same line because otherwise it's gonna get messy i'm gonna print out the id and now if i launch this you will notice that um the value returned by fork so this is inside the parent process i know because the whatever was written was not zero it was 14,687. Now, that's important to note because inside the child process, as you can see, we're returning zero, but its process ID is actually 14,687, which is what we got here inside the parent process. Okay, and then of course, you can check that it is indeed the child process by looking at the parent ID. So here the parent is 14,681, and of course, the current ID for our parent process is 14,681. All right, I hope this was useful in clearing this misunderstanding that you might have had regarding this value of zero and process IDs. And uh, if you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. All right, take care. Bye.